Alright everybody, welcome back to Tom Talk Stuff. I'm Glee Man Tom, and today we're watching everything great about How to Train Your Dragon, because last time we watched everything wrong with How to Train Your Dragon, and I remember there was everything great. And I don't like hearing bad things about How to Train Your Dragon, even if they're true. Do you guys ever notice that, like, the Horde of Vikings, whenever you see just the Horde of Vikings and How to Train Your Dragon... They don't look really good. Like, yeah, it's kind of sad. Anyways, let's move on with the reaction. This is going to be a lot of fun. And go. Toothless, does yep. that make this a How to Train Your Dragon style DreamWorks logo? It does. By golly, I think it does. I know this is sort of a typical tracking exterior shot, but since this movie is about flying on dragons, I call fly shadowing. Drag, dragon shadow, toothless shadowing. Oh, Politeness. <laughs> Beautiful beard win. <laughs> Combining not one, not two, but three classic cliches together. Slow motion glamour hair flip shot, no look explosion walk away, closing with the right stuff hero walk. Maybe one cliche is a sin, but three together is a win. Well, you made plenty I agree. of mobs. Craig Ferguson has done some stuff, but you don't expect a talk show host to be the comedy center of this movie. And he is. By this, we'll throw it for me. Setting up Hiccup's engineering skills that he'd have the tools to develop in this smithy, I can't possibly be using that correctly, make it much easier to accept when he builds a tail fin contraption later on. Some true. anticipation building by not showing us the Night Fury's true form. It just blocks out the starlight behind it. DreamWorks animation style is one of my favorites. I touched on it a bit in Kung Fu Panda, but they blend animation with reality in a very pleasing way. They do. Not every character is a perfect human specimen. I ordered an extra large boy with beefy arms. I can't believe they didn't let Jay Baruchel do a Scottish accent. So many beautiful beards. My father told me to bang my head against a rock, and I did it. That rock split in two. Demolition lessons. It might not be good dinosaur levels of realism, but man is this scenery stunning. It is. Dragon Mercy. It. I mean, talk about detail. Look at that iris, and again with a reflection of the tree in his pupil. And since Kung Fu Panda, I've been informed by some of my more knowledgeable fans that the reflection is actually a shader win for the technical team and software. So that's a win for my fan base. Still impresses me every time I see it. Human Mercy. <laughs> I do love the roar. <laughs> Appropriate reaction. <laughs> when he Pick falls over. The Night Fury, so does that disqualify him? Or I'm just wondering, did they write lines specifically for Jonah Hill, or does he just turn everything into a Jonah Hill line? No complaints. He's funny. They'll see you as he's not snot loud, and go after the more Viking like. Now that I've read the books, he's not snot loud, but he's an amusing like version. In real life RPG stats, they really nailed the injured bird can't fly animation. Another animation detail that's completely unnecessary, but nonetheless immerses you in the actual physics of this world is how the flame dances when he turns the page, creating a breeze. Maybe it's just another result of programming, but color me impressed. The plethora of dragon types we don't see outside the book is a great example of how much thought and care was put into this That is not film. the book in the And after in the, the lightning strike, either. the dragon drawing starts to move around the page. Adds oh. to the creep factor. Night Fury. Speed unknown. Size unknown. Your only chance, hide and pray it does not find you. Great way of showing how vastly the Vikings misinterpret the dragons. Assuming that the Nightwing is the most evil and dangerous because they know almost nothing about it. Is this some kind of a joke to you? Maybe you can't really hear hair color in a voice, but America Ferrera has me convinced. All the training sequences serve as visual fun and thrills as well as push the story forward with all of Hiccup's questions and dragon exposition. And this 300 type world building, survive or don't, gives the Viking training philosophy a realistic feel. Toothless is some kind of super cute cross between a cat and a dog. Oh, and also my wife bought her Jeep because it reminded her of Toothless. Maybe a tad more cat, but sharing. And smiling. This is one of the sweetest scenes in the film, and the John Powell track encapsulates the uneasiness and slow acceptance between these two and their budding friendship. I love how when Hiccup puts his hand out, he can't put it out all the way. And Toothless has to finish it. I've always loved and The absolute trust that Hiccup offers Toothless is really touching. Not a tattoo. It's a birthmark. Okay, I've been stuck with you since birth, and that was never. Bold <laughs> move to not show us that tattoo, and I love it. Getting to see the fin construction and later the saddle is totally unnecessary and totally spectacular. It gives so much more value to the eventual flight. So much personality is packed into a creature that can't speak. Brains over brawn. It's true. Immediately using his knowledge Very about expressive. dragon's feelings about eels and more importantly eel pox. And a troubleshooting how to ride your dragon montage is the fastest way to nearly fall to your death. 
<laughs> that sheep knows what's up. He has the sway with the beasts. You don't even know. Yeah. Adding to Hiccup's engineering prowess is the fact that they actually took aerodynamics into consideration with drag and lift and nothing I really know anything about. But it all seems totally realistic and thought out. Any pilots care to confirm? I Everything think I heard that they uh, hung out summer. with some pilots. Hiccup spares Toothless, so Toothless sure. spares Hiccup. Then Hiccup feels guilty for rendering Toothless flightless, so he builds him prosthetic, only to realize Toothless can't control it himself, so he decides to help him. Riding a dragon is just a happy byproduct of Hiccup. Kinda is. Friends. Man, oh man, did they capture the exhilaration of what flying must Although be. Although like. that's man like of Steel all made us he feel wants to do in the of flight, while Toothless gives us some sense of terror. You can almost feel the adrenaline rush as they approach the water. So cool. how amazing is John Powell's score over top? And then this switch to basically mm -hmm. instinctual mm -hmm. flying is so yep. intoxicating. You can feel the fight or flight. He basically has to do it. Dire or response, I guess. Kick not. in and he just goes for it. Yeah. yeah. Internal fire shot shadowing. This reminds me of the time that my brother had to break the bad news to my niece that no, she couldn't have a dragon as a pet because they don't exist. There were tears, but my wife is still holding out hope. Just how long did you think you could hide him from me? Gerard Butler as a father would be terrifying. Even when he laughs, I feel like he might pop my head off at any time or, like, kick me into a bottomless pit. All I'm saying is that he's a perfect cast for contrast with Hiccup. Odin, it was rough. Oh, thorough, matey. Only question I have is, is he praying to the Norse gods or the Marvel gods? Get down! Defending your friend. Toothless, calm All down. Calm down, Thank yeah. you for nothing. You, you useless for reptile. reptile. I love the way Toothless's wings act like a parachute when he spreads them like that. It really shows that the animators attended flight school. <laughs> Another amazing flying scene that conveys the wonder of being among and then above the clouds. Hugging. All right, I admit it. This is pretty cool. Toothless Honestly, wins best well, winner. Well, I would have him to a mast and shipped him off for feeding God mad. And you know it. Stoic the stand-up. Stoic the stand-up. The first starts by trying to escape, not just attack like Cage Coliseum monsters generally do. Hint to their true nature. It isn't until it realizes it's trapped that it starts to stalk. Saving your friend. I know I've been gushing over the animation quality, but I've got to mention the lighting and mm -hmm. shadows, which mm -hmm. has to be thanks to Roger Deakins, the Coen Brothers cinematographer. Little expectation subversion with the door slamming and bouncing open instead of staying shut like a typical animated film. Yeah. Especially when 99% of those parents would be locking Hiccup up right now so he couldn't interfere. And I like that stutter step almost faint is a sign that Stoke immediately regrets his harsh words to his son. I was a coward. I was weak. I wouldn't kill a dragon. And that's really the heart of this film. Hiccup may have been afraid, but he wasn't a coward. Showing mercy is not cowardice. Right. First to ride one, though. And riding a dragon is braver than anything any Viking has ever done. Also agree. Oh, yeah. In the movies. Ridiculous. And my undies. Good thing I brought extras. Viking honesty. That's some catapult engineering, construction, and operating This scene. There. Also, this beehive shot of the dragon is <sighs> super jealous. More proof of the dragon's They didn't creature. show it in the how it, just how everything the wrong with how to train your dragon. Finally because seeing the so giant awesome. red death in action is striking. It's no Godzilla atomic breath, but no. I'd be scared. Mm. And the flame coloring and effects are magnificent. Ride of Grendel. <laughs> is that a Beowulf reference? I didn't see that coming. I noticed that too. It's Ride of Grendel. It's like, wow, there. really? The banging works on From the red the twins? death, but it also disorients the dragons they're flying on. <laughs> yeah, true friendship. Even after the Vikings mistreat Toothless, he still trusts Hiccup. The final showdown is awesome. Yes, it Fun, is. Fun flying in action, tense chases, beautiful mm -hmm. silhouette battling amidst the clouds. Just a well-constructed set. Wonderful. Piece. The Red Death must have picked up a spread gun. <laughs> ah, the look on Toothless's face. Like he's not so sure, but he still has faith in Hiccup. Amazing facial animation. The fact that they set up the way dragons breathe fire in this story by filling their mouths with gas and then sparking that gas as the final way to destroy the Red Death is such a well-thought-out solution and shows how much consideration went into the continuity of this film. I mean, what a gorgeous shot for a cartoon. Yeah. And the image of Toothless flying into the fire to save his friend gets me every time. I did this. If you'll remember, that's the exact line Hiccup says when he finds Toothless tangled and injured. I did this. A turning point for both characters. Mm -hmm. He's alive. Hiccup's alive. Well, you know, most of them. I love it. I, lo I love, <laughs> I love Stoke's face. Foot, like, really, dude? Really? This is what... Really? Oh, this is what we need oh. a little more of this. You just gestured to all of me. Go back. Silver lining, his loss actually makes him a more fluid part of Toothless. One more wonderful flying scene getting us hyped up for the sequel. Whoa, is this Yonsei? Like the guitarist from Cigarose? Who is Icelandic? Well done, movie. Well done. What a visually as well as emotionally beautiful film. The story of misunderstood enemies becoming friends with a touch of fatherly acceptance, fun action, and flying. 
John Paul's score brought the spirit of this movie to life. Yeah. The voice actors were all at the top of their game right down to the smaller parts from Kristen Wiig and TJ Miller, but Jay Baruchel, America Ferrer, and Gerard Butler really gave us all the feels throughout. Craig Ferguson? As I touched on a bit already, Hiccup and Toothless are basically the same personalities amongst their respective species. Mm -hmm. Neither likes to kill, both are somewhat outcasts and do things differently than the rest, and both end up losing a piece of an extremity. And the relationship they form is heartwarming and makes us all get choked up thinking about our own pets. How to Train Your Dragon is a great film because of likable characters, da, 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 we're dead. solid pacing, fun action, a cute love story, and just dragons. But what sets this film apart are the themes and messages. The most basic is to be true to who you are, but with a unique spin. Hiccup never really pretends to be anything other than himself. It wasn't a lesson he needed to learn because he already had. I like that. Sure, he initially says he wants to kill dragons and be more Viking-like, but he intended to do so with his intelligence rather than pure brute force. On the contrary, he was true to himself even when no one believed in him. Another theme is a common animated trope that there are no true bad guys, just misunderstood guys. And although this movie leads us down that path, we eventually learn that not only are they misunderstood, but they're oppressed by the real bad guy. They're still a bad guy, and they don't shy away from dealing with him. Her. It. So not all dragons are bad, but not all dragons are good either. It's a stronger message than can't we all just get along. This film yeah. set up a great series, and throwing Jon Snow into the sequel was never a bad idea. If they'd only thought to cast the mother of dragons as well. You know who I'm talking about. My dog, Khaleesi. Not that there's anything wrong with a dragon-esque figure. All right, that's getting a like. Wow, that was so much fun. 100 wins! It's not so much what you look like, it's what's inside that he can't stand. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I love how on the tag... For the uh, cinema wins, it's sh it's actually asking me if I want to rewatch the video, which I think is awesome. I can't see my mouse. There we go. There we go. Wow, uh, I don't think I talked enough through that reaction. I really enjoyed it though. It was just there was something fun about seeing a movie being analyzed that I just recently enjoyed. And seeing them go, and this was amazing, and this was amazing, and ooh, I like that, and oh, did they just do that? Yes, I think they did. Another win for that. It was just a lot of fun. It really was. Uh, I really enjoyed the video, and I kind of feel bad because I don't think I was reacting enough through it. I think I was just like, yep, yep, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm. But I don't think I was talking enough, and you kind of should be doing that during a reaction, so. Uh, <laughs> oops. Uh, if there's anything else you want me to cover, leave it in the comment section below, whether it's reacting, whether it's content you just want me to talk about, let me know down there. Also, my question for you is, do you like How to Train Your Dragon 1 better, or How to Train Your Dragon 2 better? Leave that down in the comments as well. If you enjoyed this video, possibly like, maybe, just 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 maybe subscribe think about it and uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are morning afternoon or evening